today on Judge Faith. These tenants go head to head with their landlord for pain and suffering due to living in a virtual bat cave. The next morning I wake up to my cat freaking out in the house and there's a bat in my bedroom <laughs> flying everywhere. So of course my roommate and I at the time tried to capture the bat in which it landed on me and scratched me so I had to go. <laughs> We ended up killing the bat. How did you try to capture the bat? We tried to just hit it with a tennis racket. <laughs> and later, this woman hired a photographer to make a model calendar. But he says not all the models were photo ready. If you're gonna do a calendar, I don't know about the crowd, but if I'm gonna buy a calendar, I'm gonna buy a calendar with some pretty women in there. I saw a bunch of sea donkeys that she had <laughs> up in this, this calendar. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Paul Crumry and Corey Smith lived in a home that turned out to be a nightmare for them. They are suing for a refund of the three months rent they paid for substandard conditions. Landlord Woods Halley says he did his best to take care of his tenants, including hiring professionals to address their heating problem. He's countersuing for legal costs. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Smith Crumry versus Halley. Thank you, Barbara. Corey Smith. Yes. And Paul Crumry. That's correct. Yeah. You were suing the defendant Woods. Is it Holly? Halley. Halley. For three thousand two hundred and thirty dollars for retroactive rent abatement. Correct. Yes. And you are counter suing, sir, for four hundred and fifty dollars for legal costs. That's right. Okay. We'll start with you, Mr. Smith or Mr. Crumry, whoever wants to speak first. Why don't you give me some background and tell me what this case is about? All right. So I moved into the unit uh, the summer of twenty thirteen. I was looking for a place and found a promising home on Craigslist. Did you sign a lease? Yes, we do. Do you have sign a copy a of that? I do. Was of it course. a one year lease? Um, yep. It was a one-year lease. Um, we have the two subletters and the original two um, roommates that I moved in with who moved out at the end of September, actually. Okay, and the agreed-upon rent, monthly rent is how much? Eleven ninety-five. Okay, and you you all split that how many ways? Um, some points four ways, and at other points five ways. Got it. So you yeah. move in, and when do you first start noticing there might be a problem? Uh, the landlord was doing repairs on the house one day and um, failed to close the window at the end of the day. So the next morning, I wake up and there is a bat in my bedroom, <laughs> flying everywhere. So, of course, my roommate and I at the time tried to capture the bat in which it landed on me and scratched me. So I had to go. <laughs> we ended up killing the bat. How did you try to capture the bat? We tried to just hit it with a tennis racket. Just normal way you try to catch a bat. Um, <laughs> I, being a hippie, tried to throw like blankets over it and catch it, but failed to realize it would attack me. So we took the bat to the U of M campus and got it tested for rabies, which it tests positive and both- After you killed it? After we killed it. So I had to be vaccinated for rabies the second time in my life. And <laughs> yes, this isn't the first time I've contracted rabies. So the bat did have rabies? The bat did wow. have rabies. And um, I didn't encounter any big issues until December of that year. That's when the cold started hitting and that's what our major concern is about is the fact that there was no heat in the unit and it was insufficient. And this is in Minnesota? Yes. yes. Where it gets 40 degrees below. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Halley, how was the house heated? The two levels of the apartment, the second and the third floors, are heated differently. The top floor is heated by baseboard heaters and the second floor is heated by a furnace, which is in the basement. Okay. And uh, I have these uh, these data from the gas company concerning Barbie, the uh, the amount of gas that was used in the unit over this period, which was uh, through 2014 winter. And the uh, gas consumption, which is on the right here in the picture, is uh, comparable. Uh, to the preceding uh, year, 2012 mm. to 2013, and Sir, by actually, let me ask it's you, more. Wh what do you do for a living? I teach physics. 
I figured. Yeah. And, okay. Because no one brings in a chart like this unless they teach <laughs> physics or something's going and, on. And if, okay. you, if you'd like to look at, at December, which is the month which about which uh, <laughs> Corey is complaining, you can see Class that is in session, everyone, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Coming up on Judge Faith. A dangerous bat and no heat weren't the only problems these tenants faced. Not only are we cold, we have dirty clothes, we're freezing, our fire escape is terrible. You see he's over there taking notes, right? Oh, He's about course. to respond to everything. Yes. And later. I agreed to do the photo shoot. I agreed to do the calendar. I also agreed to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Plaintiff Paul Crumry and Corey Smith are suing for a refund of rent after being forced to live in freezing temperatures. Landlord Woods Halley says he did everything possible to fix the problems and wants reimbursement for legal advice. How cold was the unit? Um, was approximately 55 degrees. We do have a photo of a thermometer that we did place in the apartment. We were huddled on the couch with the cat three blankets next to this one to survive. All five roommates. All five of us. Um, you can see in the photo, it's in the bottom right hand corner. It reads 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Minneapolis law states that it has to be able to be heated above 68 degrees Fahrenheit at all times. And did you make written complaints yes. to the landlord? Mm -hmm. um, I do have multiple email. May I see those please? Uh, yes. <clears throat> When did you get the first message that there was an issue with the heat? Well, I don't have the date, but it was in December. They began to indicate that there were problems with the heat in December. That's when I started uh, contacting these uh, these professionals to look at the heating system, about which I'd never had complaints before. Well, and maybe, I mean, maybe this the house is 100 years old. Maybe this well, is the year that the furnace isn't the next, working properly. I mean, the preceding year, there were no complaints. Right. Well, yeah. what I'm saying to you, sir, at some That's point, why, perhaps, mm -hmm. The furnace isn't functioning properly. Well, Clearly, there's an I, issue, right? That's why I, I had the furnace checked, and it was found to be functioning normally. What do you think the issue is? Do you think they're making this up? I didn't know. I, I had the furnace checked. They said it was working all right. Uh, then I waited. Then there were further complaints. So I contacted uh, one other idea that I had was that perhaps the ducts were blocked. So I had a professional come. And, and didn't find and a problem. Entire, couldn't find any blockage at okay. all. I understand you have some more photos you want to show me. We do have photos of the furnace, which you can tell is clearly dated. It looks like a robot from a 1920s movie. <laughs> um, Furnaces. What year is the furnace from, sir? I don't know either. I it was there. <laughs> it was there the when I from. bought the uh, unit in uh, the the building in 1980. The however, it is not the same. It's not 100 years. The uh, heating unit is not 100 years old. It ha it has been converted to gas uh, at some point uh, before 1980. It has a gas conversion burner in it. That's okay. What it's called. All right. I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me what this is. This is our fire escape. Um, it was rickety. Um, when you stepped out on it, it wobbled. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to walk out uh, on this... that when my house is burning. I'll jump out the window. That would kill me before I hit I'd the I'd like ground. to address that issue. Hold on a second, sir. Hold on yeah. a second. I want to go through the rest of the photos. We also have photos of um, our shower, um, which no matter how hard we cleaned it, continued to grow mold because there was no ventilation other than a window in the bathroom. Okay, what is this? The infamous washer and dryer. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> well, wait, wait a minute. We, may I comment on the on a couple of issues that were raised here? I want them to tell me about the washer and dryer, and then I'll let you have the opportunity right. to respond about all three of these photos. Okay. Um, I put a load of clothes in there, totally ruined it, and I would had a roommate of mine actually try to repair it herself. And I tried to help her. It leaked all over our apartment. Yeah, it was just a big, hot mess. And so when we passed it off to the landlord, he basically told us that the warranty is gone. I can't help you. So not only are we cold, we have dirty clothes. We're freezing. <laughs> our fire escape is terrible. You see he's over there taking notes, right? Oh, He's of about course. to respond to everything. Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Haley. OK. Break it down. Baby. <laughs> the fire escape was... Uh, not rickety. Okay. It wobbled when we stepped down on it. I here's my here's my issue. Wobbles. Listen, despite Neither all of the that, the real issue here is the lack of heat in mm -hmm. this unit during the winter months mm -hmm. in Minnesota. It, I understand that you were trying to address the, the issue. Yes, I was. 
but the problem was not being addressed. What do you think was going he on? He just wouldn't provide anything for us. Like, he was trying to do this all by himself. He would come with his little toolbox and try to repair this whole yes. house. Not once. I never once saw a contractor at the house. No. Never once did I see somebody. Only, I saw one this, inspector. This is that not was true. I've the only contractor that we saw at the house was the one to clean the ducks. I know you say that this was the first time you had a complaint about the heat. Based on the emails and the records I'm looking at, they're not making this up. There was clearly an issue with the heat, and it went unresolved, sir, for the entire winter that they were there. You obviously knew there was a problem because you were willing to settle. So here's my judgment in this case, based on all the testimony I've heard today and the proof the plaintiffs have submitted. I think they have proved, sir, that they did not have adequate heat during the winter months in Minnesota, which you are required to provide to them as their landlord. So I'm ordering you to pay the judgment they're asking for, $3,230. They're not suing you for all of the months they lived in that unit and were cold. My judgment in this case is for the plaintiffs, $3,230, your counterclaim is dismissed. <laughs> Plaintiff Tammy Spade hired a photographer to produce a calendar of her models, but said nothing was ever produced. She is suing for the loss of potential sales and a refund. Defendant Patrick Jelk says he showed up at every photo shoot and was ready to deliver the calendar. But when the plaintiff failed to pay the final installment, he bowed out of the deal. He's countersuing for defamation of character. Tammy Spade? Yes. You are suing the defendant Patrick Jelks for $1,000 for lost calendar sales you say he cost you? Yes. And you are countersuing, sir, for defamation of character? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll start with you, Ms. Spate. Let's start from the beginning. Tell me how you know Mr. Jelks. I met Mr. Jelks on or about September 2013, and this was through one of my clients. I'm a hairstylist. I saw some of the photos that he did for her, and they were great. I liked his work and that I wanted him to do something for me because I was trying to brand myself and be a better stylist and get my name out there with various photos of my clients. What kind of work do you do, sir? I'm a photographer, man. What yeah. kind of photographs do you take? Freelance, wedding, I do it all. I'm like a jack of all trades. I also DJ, too. And do you have your own business? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And he did an actually good job. I don't know on whose part, but it was a good job. <laughs> it okay. was my fault. <laughs> Next on Judge Faith. If you wanted her to pay you the remainder of the money, Right. Why didn't you present a calendar to her and show her, say, this is the calendar, this is the completed product, and you do an exchange right then and there? Um, that's not how my business works. Plaintiff Tammy Spate says she hired a photographer but never received the promised calendar. She wants a full refund of everything, plus costs for lost sales. Defendant Patrick Jelk says the plaintiff would have gotten her calendar if she had just paid her bill. What exactly were you looking for someone to do for you? I was looking for a photographer to take photos of each person for one day of, or one month of the year. So you wanted a calendar? Yes. And you wanted a different model for, to represent each month? Each month. And, and was this a hair calendar? Were it was a hair to... calendar, but I was doing it kind of, I felt big, where they had scenes like, for Thanksgiving, she had like a little set where she looked like she was eating for Fourth of July. We had a flag, and she was kind of, her hair and, you know, it was 4th of July. Okay, so you have a contract here. He would shoot the models and also create the calendar. Yes. All for $350. Yes, he was supposed to do 12 models. You agree with that? Uh, yes, ma'am. He did 12 okay. models, and he was also to commission to make 50 calendars along with this. That's he not was a lot going of money. Are you, do you them. always come so cheaply? Oh, uh, no, ma'am. Okay. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's and, a deal that's, in Georgia? That's a deal. That's okay. a deal. So you hire him, you pay him how much up front? I gave him the $150 to start it all off, and everything was going pretty okay. Well, sometime in November... Well, ho this is what I'm confused about. How many days... Because, I mean, he shows up, he should be able to shoot this in one day, in right? In one day, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, so what happened? we could not complete it in one day Why? because... She didn't have the 12 models. I didn't... There <laughs> wasn't commission for me to have 12 in one day. That was a lot, and I was doing it all 
This was all me. I don't recall that, Your Honor. I'm, this is what I'm saying. You, you got it. You, you grasping the concept. You, you're a smart lady. It doesn't take long to do a shoot. If you're gonna do a calendar, I don't know about the crowd, but if I'm gonna buy a calendar, I'm gonna buy a calendar with some pretty women in there. I saw a bunch of sea donkeys that she had <laughs> up in this, this calendar. But well, what know, does that have to do with you taking the photographs? Oh, I'm saying, I took the pictures. I could have done all 12 of them. So and does, these are the people honor. that she selected. Hold on a right. second. These are the people that she selected, though. So the problem is not how the models look. You're saying but the you problem said, is she didn't have enough models. That's right. She didn't have enough models. She had January, February, March. April might have been missing. You know, like, when is April? <laughs> you know, what's going on? So what, what was going on? Your Honor. That How many was... days? Let me ask you something, ma'am. <laughs> that... yeah, you got, you got... <laughs> let, me, let me ask you something. How many different days did you expect him to show up to take photographs for you? I expected him to come until it was completed, and he agreed upon it. He came every Sunday. Did you agree to that? I didn't agree to none of that. He I, came. I, I agreed to do the photo shoot. I agreed, I agreed to do the calendar. I also agreed to get paid. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's back up for a second, though. <laughs> Did you agree to show up on different days to shoot various models? I agreed to show up on the day she told me to come, which was that first day. And you assumed there would be 12 I models there? I assumed there was going to be 12 models. That and how many models were there that day? Just it three? It was three. So the agreement is you would pay $100 up front, but you paid $150. I paid $100 up front, and then I gave him an additional $150. $150. So there's only $100 left. Yes. Now, what happened? So he takes all the photographs. Were you happy with the photos? I was happy with the photos. Okay, but he's Very supposed to so. then produce calendars. Why didn't you give her the calendars? I didn't get my full payment, my money. <laughs> You're supposed to pay in full before you get your product. Really? Yeah. I mean, because she she has the right to view the finished product. Did you show her the she finished just product? Viewed, she viewed it. So she, you showed her the calendar, the completed calendar. Oh, no, I, I, I didn't show her the completed calendar, but I showed her what was going to be on the calendar. All I had to do was put it on some right, paper. Right, but if you wanted her to pay you the remainder of the money, right. why didn't you present a calendar to her and show her, say, this is the calendar, this is the completed product, this is what I will give you, and you do an exchange right then and there? Um, that's not how my business works. <laughs> I, when I do... When I do weddings, anything, I, they pay me up front. What's your counterclaim about, sir? You're suing for $1,000 for defamation of character? Yes, ma'am. See, I know some of the same people that she knows. And I had a little bird come tell me that she was talking a little trash about me behind my Who back. Who told you that? Huh? If, you're, if you're gonna sue for defamation of character, you have to be specific. Oh, I'll be So specific. when you say, you don't have to tell me their name, but who told you something one of, that one was of said? The, one of the, the sea donkey models said that she was at the shop bashing me like, yeah, this is this, saying, oh, I'm never gonna do business with Pat again. He didn't give me my calendars. Said that I was not professional, I was not good, my photos were mediocre at best. In order for you to prove defamation of character, you have to prove that the statements she said were false, first of all, and generally a person's opinion about you is not defamation. That's her opinion. If she doesn't think you're professional, that's her opinion. You didn't complete the calendars, that's obviously not false. So everything that you told me, the statements that you say she made, even if she denies making them, if they were true, if, that, if she actually made those statements, I don't find that it's defamation. And now, Judge Faith rules. Now, let me get to your claim, because you're suing for lost profits. Yes. Because he didn't complete the calendar sales. And you're saying you would have sold 50 calendars. Yes. And I don't know that. Do you have contracts from 50 people telling you that they would have bought these calendars at $20 a calendar? How are you going to prove to me okay. that you would have sold 50 calendars? I do calendars? not have contracts from 50 people that said that they would buy it at $20 each. What I do have is witness statements of the models that were in the shoot, because they were obligated to at least buy one for being in it. And, of course, they were so excited, they'd never done anything. They're not models. So their family, you know, they were really excited to do it. And also, I have Okay, another... I don't... I've, I've heard enough. I don't need to see your witness statements. Here's what I'm going to do. I can't award you lost profits because you haven't proven to me that you had 50 people lined up to buy these calendars at $20 a calendar. However, clearly she lost some sales because she couldn't sell a single calendar because she didn't have it to sell. So I'm going to order you to pay her for the 10 models you say would have purchased calendars. I'm going to order you to pay her $200, $20 
for each calendar for those 10 models. In addition, I'm going to order you to refund her the $250 she paid you, sir, because you did not complete the job. Judgment in this case for the plaintiff, $450. Your counterclaim Thank is Thank you, dismissed. Your Honor. Good luck. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.